Golden State Media Concepts bring you Book Review Podcast, a haven for bookworms of all ages and the widest genres, from mystery to memoirs, romance to comedy, fantasy to sci-fi. If you love to read, this is a podcast for you. It's the Golden State Media Concepts Book Review Podcast. Hello and welcome to the GSMC Book Review Podcast, brought to you by the GSMC Podcast Network. I am your host, Sarah, and I am, once again, happy to be with you to talk about books. And today we will be talking about uh, some Audible Originals, actually. This is not a paid advertisement for Audible or anything like that, but I do have an Audible membership. I do listen to a lot of audiobooks, whether that's from the Audible membership or checking them out from the library or what have you. But when you have an Audible membership, you get uh, two what are called Audible Originals, free each month. So I have been dutifully collecting those for a while now and not listening to them because, as you know, my TBR list is very... I guess this would be my TBLT, to be listened to list, is uh, very long and there have been other things that I have been listening to. For instance, Maisie Dobbs, I just finished the last one that's available and now I have to wait like the rest of the world. I, I... I love when I have a whole series of books to read that I can just kind of binge, maybe not all at once, but you know, you don't have to wait a year between books and now they're done. <laughs> at any rate, um, I was trying to figure out what to listen to next because that is what I do on my 40 minute commute and decided that I would check out some of the Audible originals, and I'm glad that I did. So I started with actually some of the more recent ones that I have gotten. The first one I listened to is called Even Tree Nymphs Get the Blues, which in in itself is, it's a bit of a mouthful, but it is an intriguing title. It is a novella. It's um, three hours and three minutes, and it is by Molly Harper. So it Um, It's a paranormal, supernatural romance. It is um, set in a series of paranormal uh, or supernatural romances that is uh, the Mystic Bayou series. So it is number two and a half in that series. And as you listen to this one, you can tell that the, some of the characters some of the couples who are characters in this book, secondary characters, you can tell that they've had their own story. And in fact, they are books one and two, and we'll be getting to those in a moment. It is um, narrated by Amanda, Amanda Ronconi and Jonathan Davis, who also narrate the first two books. The uh, summary, a hilarious new standalone novella brimming with otherworldly charm from the reigning queen of paranormal romantic comedy, Molly Harper. Um, This is the publisher's summary, so I don't know if, you know, if she is the reigning queen, but it's kind of them to say that. Uh, She's she's good, yes. So Ingrid Asher is the newest resident of Mystic Bayou, a tiny town hidden in the swamp where where shapeshifters, vampires, witches, and dragons live alongside humans. Ingrid doesn't ask for much. The solitary tree nymph just wants to live a quiet life, running her ice cream shop in peace. Unfortunately, she can't seem to shake her new neighbor, Rod Aspern, head of the League's data science department, and so good-looking it just isn't fair. And the League is, um, oh, I can't think of what it's called exactly, the League of Inner Species. Oh, shoot, I'm butchering that. But it's a it's a League that works with... Uh, humans who know about the supernatural world and those in the supernatural world who are just trying to live their lives and not be harassed by humans who don't know about them yet. Obviously, some humans do. If there's one thing Ingrid doesn't need, it's someone poking around in her business. But the more she gets to know the hunky mathematician, the more she finds herself letting her guard down. Can she trust him with her secrets, or will her past destroy everything? So this is a novella. As I said, it is three hours and three minutes to listen to. Um, I believe it is 
only available as an Audible original. I looked to see if you could get it to read, and I didn't find that. If I am wrong about that, please let me know. I looked on Molly Harper's website, I looked on Amazon, etc., and I really only saw it as an Audible original, which I think is kind of how the Audible originals work. Um, as a novella, you know, you get a, a sort of more condensed story. You can tell that there are characters who have clearly had their own stories, but I didn't feel like listening to this one first that I was missing on details or anything, and I didn't feel like she belabored the point of catching you up on some of those details that you would have learned about had you read the first two. Paranormal Romance, she reminded me a lot of Cynthia Diamond, who I've had on this podcast. Same kind of um, sort of snarky humor and interspecies mingling. <laughs> there is, let's see, there's a dragon dating a phoenix. And my first thought was, hey, Cynthia already did that. And then I realized I was combining two of her books. So that was wrong. Uh, there, that, that was a dragon dating a siren and a phoenix dating a troll in Cynthia's books. But there's a dragon dating a phoenix, which seems like a lot of fire potential. And a bear shifter dating a human, but not. So part of the thing about Mystic Bayou, it's one of the few like almost fully supernatural communities and it is located on something called the rift which i'm going to imagine is probably explained a little more fully in some of the other books the rift is starting to affect the rift first of all attracts supernatural beings so that's why there's such a community of them there and such a uh, um, an assortment of supernatural beings there it also is starting to have an effect on the humans so some humans are developing supernatural powers in their adult years some human couples are having uh, babies they call them magi and um, having supernatural babies even though they are both human so that is partly why the league is there they are doing research on why the rift is affecting humans what's going on and all of those lovely researching stuff <laughs> and then the supernaturals call the humans mundanes am i getting am i just making that up thinking of something else doesn't matter they're humans and there are also the supernatural creatures so ingrid is originally from norway she's an or originally a norwegian tree nymph uh, she's referred to as a hulder which made me smile because it reminded me of the magnus chase books by Rick Riordan, the Magnus Chase books are the ones that deal with the um, Scandinavian gods, the Norse gods, and there is a Hulder character in that. There were a couple of things that made me laugh in this book because they reminded me of the Magnus Chase books, and uh, I was, you know, I, I, I knew Greek mythology and Egyptian mythology to a certain extent before I read Rick Riordan's books, but I feel like I know, I feel like there's so many situations in my life where I'm reading something and I'm like, hey, yeah, I know that myth. I, I learned about it from Rick Riordan. So when it was announced that Ingrid was a Hulder or, a, well, she's a tree nymph, but she's also known as a Hulder, uh, then I was like, huh, I know about these things. There is something in her past that has made her leave Norway. She lived for many years in New York, and she's very, very wary of strangers, wary of those in the league, wary of science. And you do find out, of course, why that is and why she left Norway in the first place. Rob is a human. He is a mathematician from Colorado, but he works for the league doing mathy things. <laughs> He's studying the rift and doing, doing, you know, equations and everything to kind of try to figure out at what rate the rift is. I don't know if it's expanding, if it's sending off different energy it's you know it's it's i guess it could be kind of, so it's a fantasy book but in that way it's also kind of science fiction because they're doing science and math and all those good um sciencey stem sort of things <laughs> you can tell that i did get good grades in science and math i swear i just um can't speak about them knowledgeably apparently so i thought it was a lot of fun there were um times when i busted out laughing i won't say that i lol'd be i mean that phrase drives me crazy can i just go on a tiny little rant before we go on a break lol laugh out loud right fine 
LOL. Sometimes you laugh out loud. I get that. But when people use it as a verb, it's not a verb. I LOL'd or I don't know. It just bugs me and I don't ever use it, but I do sometimes laugh out loud, but I, um, I, I won't say never because I'm sure I've done it once or twice, but I very, very, very rarely use LOL in anything, emails, texts, tweets, whatever. Don't do it. Rather use the emoji. I'm going to stop so we can take a break and uh, I'll go ponder my, my LOL issues. I should probably get LOL therapy. I'll look into that during the break. Stay tuned. You're listening to the GSMC Book Review Podcast and I'll be right back. Hi, this is Sarah, host of the GSMC Book Review Podcast, here to talk to you about The Emissary, book one of the One Great Year series. Written by Tamara Veach and Renny DeFazio, The Emissary is the journey of soulmates, of good versus evil, and of how humanity evolves over time. I was reading a book by Graham Hancock called Fingerprints of the Gods, and in that book he outlines this alternative history that there was a much older civilization than we are currently taught in schools, but it was completely wiped off the face of the earth by some major catastrophe. And it, I thought, what? why isn't everybody in the world talking about this? Marcus and Helgul are the only characters in the story who have past life memory, and the two are involved in a battle between good and evil as this story unfolds. The, the whole relationship between Helgul and Marcus shows the importance of how what choice you make in what in every moment dictates where your life goes and who you become and you can always change that and Marcus and Helgul are on that journey together of making choices and you see how totally different their lives are even though their beginnings were the same. The Emissary shows how every soul has a purpose, how all lives have meaning, and how we are all connected. If you want more information about this book and this series, Tamara and Rennie were recently guests on the GSMC Book Review podcast, so check out episode 162 to hear their interview. Their books are available at Amazon.com or by ordering through your favorite bookstore. If you're searching for an epic adventure to read this summer, the One Great Year series might just be what you're looking for. Welcome back to the GSMC Book Review Podcast. I, I took a couple of deep breaths during the break, and I feel better now. I, I'm glad I got that off my chest. I'm glad that you uh, have shared my pain with you. Hopefully that will lessen it. And um, I'm just going to try to never speak of this again on the podcast. <laughs> uh, but don't don't get me wrong. There will be other rants. You know there will be other rants. You know I get on my soapbox every now and then on this podcast. I can't help it. So, I mentioned the other two books. Uh, this is the Mystic Bayou series by Molly Harper, as I mentioned, and I do want to either go back and read those books or go back and listen to them. I did enjoy the narrators. And, uh, you know, whenever you have a male and a female narrator, I always, or, you know, multiple narrators, doesn't have to be a male and a female. I'm always intrigued because of the way they do the voices. So, you know, when you just have one narrator, then you get used to how the voices are and you start recognizing characters. It's the same with with multiple narrators, but like this one's set in Louisiana, so there's some very distinct accents. And um, Ingrid is Norwegian, so she has a Scandinavian accent. And the, the narrators aren't completely different in how they do those accents, but different enough that, you know, you're kind of like, well, that doesn't really sound like Ingrid when... The male narrator is reading, but it wasn't enough to like pull me out of the story. It was just kind of something that made me go, oh, yeah, that's definitely different. And uh, I think I like this one better than that one. So the first one in this series is called How to Date Your Dragon. 
um, which is, you know, a play on, I'm sure, how to train your dragon. Anthropologist Jillian Ramsey's career has taken a turn south. Concerned that technology is about to chase mythological creatures out into the open, how long can Sasquatch stay hidden from Google Maps? The League for Interspecies Cooperation, that's what it is. The League for Interspecies Cooperation is sending Jillian to Louisiana on a fact-finding mission. While the League hopes to hold on to secrecy for a little bit longer, they're preparing for the worst in terms of human reactions. They need a plan, so they look to Mystic Bayou, a tiny town hidden in the swamp where humans and supernatural residents have been living in harmony for generations. Mermaids and gator shifters swim in the bayou. Spirit bottles light the front porches after twilight. Dragons light the fires under crayfish pots. Jillian's first assignment for the League could be her last. Mystic Bayou is wary of outsiders, and she has difficulty getting locals to talk to her. And she can't get the gruff town sheriff, Bale Boone, off her back or out of her mind. Bale is the finest male specimen she's seen in a long time, even though he might not be human. Soon their flirtation is hotter than a dragon's breath, which Bale just might turn out to be. And... We know he is because, A, the book is called How to Date Your Dragon, and B, I just told you that there was a date, a dragon dating a phoenix in the first book. So that's the first one. Uh, the second one is called Love and Other Wild Things, Mystic Bayou Book 2. This one is about the other couple mentioned in the novella. Welcome to Mystic Bayou, a tiny town hidden in the swamp where shapeshifters, vampires, witches, and dragons live alongside humans. The town formed around the mysterious energy rift in the bayou, which helps keep the town's magic in balance. But lately, the rift has been widening and destabilizing, threatening to send the town's magical population into chaos. Energy witch Danica Teal has been sent by the League to figure out what's going on with the help of bear shifter Mayor Zed. While working on the case, Zed falls head over paws for Danny, but she's reluctant to engage in anything beyond a role in his cave. Danny's family is counting on her to get the job done, and she has no time for distractions. But when an ominous presence begins stalking Danny through the bayou, they'll need to band together to make it out alive. And, um, oh, it says this book is based on the Audible original audiobook. Oh, so these started out, this one started out as an Audible original, and then um, the book is based on the Audible original. So, obviously, Molly Harper wrote it. That is intriguing. Let me go back to the other one and see if it also started out as an Audible original. Yes, it did. Oh, look at that. Okay, so these are all Audible originals. Hmm. Well, I learned something new as I was reading to them, but they are also now books that you can get on Kindle, at least. You can get them on Amazon. I am curious now if the novella will eventually be... Uh, it's free on Amazon or free on Audible for the month of June, but since June is very soon to be over, I wonder if then it somehow, not somehow, it's not like magic, although it is about magic, but then if it will become um, a book that you could read on your tablet or some other way. Uh, this one is, let's see, 18 pages, 18 pages, 18 chapters. Does it give me any page numbers. Sometimes Audible books give, still give you page numbers. 216 pages. So it's a little longer than a novella, I would say, but not like a huge, big, giant, thick novel. What about the second one? Um, isn't it fun listening to me look through things on the internet? This one's 299 pages, the second one. So definitely not a novella. And um, I'm intrigued. I am interested to see if she will continue going with this series and where it will go next, etc. And I, I, I enjoyed the book. I would like to read the others because she is, you know, kind of, oh, her, her webpage, the tagline on her webpage is snarky, snarky romance with a bite. I don't have that tab up anymore, but uh, I think it was snarky romance with a bite. Let me see if it's on her Amazon author page. Something with a bite, and I think it was snarky. Anybody who uses the word snarky in any f official capacity has my vote uh, for something. I don't know what that vote is. Mm, let's see. She worked for six years as a reporter and humor columnist for the Paducah Sun. She is... Doo -doo -doo, she lives in western Kentucky. It does not say anything about her tagline. Doesn't matter. I should have left that 
tab open so that I could have shared that with you because how can you trust me to share random taglines with you in the future? She does have other books that are not in the um, in the Mystic Bayou series. They seem to have the same kind of covers, so I'm guessing that they're probably also series. There's one, Sweet Tea and Sym- Sympathy and... Um, Give me some sugar, which have the same font and both have food. So yes, that is, give me some sugar is Southern Eclectic book six. So there is the Southern Eclectic series. Changeling is um, Sorcery and Society book one. So she does have other series. If you um, are interested in Molly Harper, I will definitely be checking those out someday. Still working on all those books that I keep saying I'm going to read, but I will get there. I, I, I swear, I swear to you, I mean, but you know, it doesn't affect you. I have to swear to myself that someday I will read these things, whether or not I do, the world may never know. We are going to talk about the second book that I have listened to on Audible Original, and I will give you a quick description of that before we take our second break of the podcast. This one is a children's mm, book. It's an Audible original. So the children's Audible original, what would you call that? I need a better, I need a better vocabulary. I'll just tell you what it is. It is called Jukebox Joyride. It is by Jason Stein, Jason Rabinowitz, and the pop-ups. It is narrated by Jason Rabinowitz, Jacob Stein, Kara Samantha, Susan Bennett, Noel McNeil, either Noel or Noel, but probably, I don't know, and Carly uh, Chirochi. It is three hours and 31 minutes, so just slightly longer than even wood nymphs get the, even tree nymphs get the blues. And it is like an old time radio show. It has sound effects. It has music. It has, uh, if not a full cast, it has several voices doing, uh, the parts and it is a, the, the subtitle is A Time Traveling Adventure. So if you are um, interested in time travel, you should definitely stay tuned while we take the second break, and I'll be telling you more about Jukebox Joyride when we come back. Stay tuned. You're listening. Tired of searching the vast jungle of podcasts? Now listen close and hear this out. There's a podcast network that covers just about everything that you've been searching. The Golden State Media Concepts Podcast Network is here. Nothing less than a podcast bliss with endless hours of podcast coverage. From news, sports, music, fashion, cooking, entertainment, fantasy, football, and so much more. So stop lurking around and go straight out to the Golden State Media Concepts Podcast Network. Guaranteed to fill that podcast itch. Whatever it may be, visit us at www.gsmcpodcast.com. Follow us on Facebook and Twitter and download us on iTunes, SoundCloud, and Google Play. Welcome back to the GSMC Book Review Podcast. I am now speaking about Jukebox Joyride, which is an Audible original by Jacob Stein, Jason Rabinowitz, The Pop-Ups, etc. This is a a children's story, and um, the publisher's summary is this. If you could go back in time to witness any concert from all of history, what would it be? Jimi Hendrix at Woodstock? Mozart in the Salzburg Court? The Beatles, Rooftop Farewell, and I'm just going to interject here. Yeah, that would be it. Um, Jukebox Joyride follows 12-year-old twins, Jules and George, on a wild adventure through time. Their uncle Bob, a renowned renowned ethnomusicologist, he studies music, has discovered the secret to time travel and is having a ball joyriding through history, checking out the best concerts ever. But something's gone wrong. 
A sinister force has been unleashed. Someone is chasing after Uncle Bob, and the fate of all music hangs in the balance. Now it's up to Jules and George to find their uncle before their new rival does. It's a musical adventure that brings the twins from the birth of jazz in New Orleans to a performance by an 11-year-old Mozart in Vienna, all while trying to make it back to the present day to pass their history test. That is the summary, and it is it is so much fun. Also about the creators, three-time Grammy nominees, the pop-ups, have been raising the bar for children's music for almost a decade. Their mission to bring humor, awesomeness, educational utility, and wild creativity to children's media. Since launching in 2010, the pop-ups have produced content for Sesame Workshop, Amazon Music, ABC Mouse, Sirius XM, and Nick Jr., and are currently developing a TV show with Amazon Studios. They wrote and recorded the theme song for NPR's beloved kids' podcast, Wow in the World. Their latest endeavor, Jukebox Joyride, is a swashbuckling adventure that will get kids excited about history and making their own music. Featuring original songs and historical settings, this Audible original is sure to captivate the entire household. It is a lot of fun, I have to say. I, um, my, my only comment, my only criticism, it's not even a criticism. It's my own fault. Well, it's whatever. It's the fault of the universe in that the AC has gone out in our car. We haven't had it fixed yet. I need to drive with the windows open in order to not swelter to death. <laughs> So there is a lot of music in this because as you can imagine they the kids are traveling back in time they're you know meeting Mozart they're learning about music their uncle is an ethnomusicologist there's a lot about music in here and the music that is being referenced is being played sometimes with the wind blowing through the windows of my car it's a little hard to make out the dialogue going on with the music that's not the fault of <laughs> the people who created this. That's the fault of my car that has no AC. That's my only criticism. I am. I really enjoyed the the time travel. It was you know there there were a couple times this being only three hours. There are a few times where I felt like I missed something. I kept having to check the chapters and make sure I hadn't skipped something because they have to you know condense it then they sometimes jump ahead in ways that could use maybe a slightly better segue but it's never anything that that throws me off for too long it um it's got 4.2 stars out of five on audible for the, for overall performance four and a half out of five story 4.1 out of five so you know, there could be some, some gaps filled in there, but again, it's three hours and it's making, hopefully making history and music fun for kids because, you know, history, depending on how it's taught and the teacher in the, the history teacher in this book is kind of an example of one who doesn't teach so well, it can be, it can be boring, but this one makes it because the kids are time traveling, they're living history, they're living music, and Uncle Bob is fond of saying, and there's a couple other characters who say that we wouldn't have hip hop, we wouldn't have rock, we wouldn't have any of the music that we have now without all of the all of the music that came before it, not just doo wop, not just um jazz, not just anything that's come in the last hundred years, but, you know, tribal music, um, music from thousands of years ago. And so there's, there's not like a lot of detail about that, but there's some scenes that explain a little bit and th there could be maybe a little bit more explanation, but you, again, you have to find that balance between um, keeping the plot going, but, and including some of the educational stuff. So the children are learning about music as they go through the different times, trying to figure out what has happened to Uncle Bob, trying to thwart what has now become their new nemesis and, um, their arch nemesis. Sisses. I just like to make that plural because it's hard to say, um, their new arch nemesis, which is called Tin Ear. Uh, they are, I think they're trying to destroy all music for, uh, I think, that, I think that's what their, their nefarious mission is, was what have you. Um, 
I don't know if they have a manifesto. I didn't look into that. (laughs) At any rate, I thought this was really fun. George is the main character. Jules is his twin sister. And she is not a secondary character, but not quite as prominent as George. George plays the guitar. Jules plays the drums. They have a band called Unlimited Breadsticks (laughs) that practices out of their garage because of course they do. And then they discover Uncle Bob's secret to time travel and start having these adventures to try to save the world of music. And they learn a lot along the way. They are, <laughs> they're, they're kind of terrible at time. I mean, they're 11 or 12, 11, almost 12, or are they 12? I can't remember. The synopsis said 12, so we'll go with 12. They, um, they're terrible at trying to figure out what time period they're in. They just ask, they just ask people, what year is it? (laughs) Which gets them some really weird looks, but they, they always find themselves, not always, but they often find themselves in scrapes that they need to get out of running from situations that aren't entirely of their own making. It's a lot of fun. I love that it is like an old time radio show with all of the sound effects. You know, I mean, if somebody knocks on a door, you get a knock on the door. You get all of those sound effects, plus all the different music. So whatever type of music they're talking about, you can guarantee that. Apparently this book has me all choked up because I have um, started to get a tickle in my throat. Fortunately, it is time to wrap up this episode anyway. So thank you so much for joining me. Please join me again on Tuesday for uh, another interview. Tuesdays are interviews. This time it will be a returning guest to the podcast, Kristen Rockaway. She was on, mm, she was one of my earlier interviews. So it's been to talk about her book, The Wild Woman's Guide to Traveling the World, which was a lot of fun. Another romantic comedy, which, you know, I'm I'm fond of. And she's coming back with her new romantic comedy called How to Hack a Heartbreak. You will definitely want to tune in to hear what Kristen has to say about this new book. So join me on Tuesday for that conversation. In the meantime, have a great weekend hope your AC is working either in your car or in your house and hope that uh, regardless of the temperature, you can find some time to go. Get- You've been listening to the Golden State Media Concepts Book Review Podcast, part of the Golden State Media Concepts Podcast Network. You can find this show and others like it at www.gsmcpodcast.com. Download our podcast on iTunes, Stitcher, SoundCloud, and Google Play. Just type in GSMC to find all the shows from the Golden State Media Concepts Podcast Network from movies to music from sports to entertainment and even weird news you can also follow us on twitter and on facebook thank you and we hope you have enjoyed today's program